Hi guys, it's Kelly Ladavola here and I'm back with another video for W Plus 9. Today we're using some, well, it's kind of a mix, honestly, some older products and some newer products. I am using the Adorable Giraffe from Party Animal, which you can see this is a well-loved set of mine. I'm using the Sunshine Sunshine Layers die. I don't know why that was hard to say. And then I'm also using our hexagon dies. So first thing first, I pick the hexagon that was going to fit my card front and then I'm just tracing that on um, a piece of white W plus 9 cardstock so that I know where I need to color my rainbow. I really wanted to do something um, that was kind of fun and encouraging and I love rainbows. <laughs> so that made sense. I'm going to do this with my Copics, but you can do this with any medium you would like. If you're using watercolor paper, you could definitely paint a, what? well, honestly, anything in the background, but you could, you know, do um, colored pencils. You can do um, distress inks or oxides, whatever kind of background you want to do. I just thought it would be fun to do a rainbow. In order to make my colors blend, first of all, when I picked them out, I picked out ones that were similar numbers, and the number on the end is the one that matters. So I have a R35 that is mixing into a YR04, but 5 is close to 4, so that's fine. Um, so those are the numbers that I'm looking at. The first numbers just have to do with um, their brightness factor, and that doesn't really matter so much as the end number that they're similar there. And then you're going to see me go over these um, a couple of times so that I'm getting a good blend. Um, and that's really just the key to it. If you find you have two colors that aren't blending um, particularly well, it's not necessarily that you need a transition color in between them. It's more or less just, you know, continually going over them. Copics blend in the fibers of the paper. And so sometimes you need to put down a lot of ink to get them to blend well. Um, so then after I do the rainbow, I picked that um, BO2 I showed you in the beginning with the rest of the rainbow colors as my blue sky color. It looks kind of dark when you first put it down, but that's just because of the moisture in the paper. Uh, it really does lighten up to be a nice like sky blue color. And you can see I'm coloring right over those pencil lines. That's because it's not going to matter. Nobody's going to see it. Um, I traced the outside edge of my die and the die that like the frame that will fit over it will be slightly smaller than that. But just so you know, um, in any other instance, if you are going to color over pencil, you will be able to see it and you will not be able to erase it um, because it's an alcohol based marker. It kind of traps the graphite from the pencil underneath there and you just cannot get rid of it. So just keep that in mind. Just going to go over this a couple of times till it's um, a smooth coat and then I'm going to set that aside. I am um, using same white paper, a uh, white cardstock to um, cut my actual frame, which will be my card front. And then I've picked out the uh, clouds. Um, there's one of the clouds is a small, um, basically they're, it's almost like a twofer, okay, with those because you get an outline of the cloud stamp and then you get an a cloud stamp, cloud die, and then you get an actual cloud. And I'm going to be using both of those and I cut multiples because um, I wasn't sure how many I was going to need. Here I'm using um, the Gina K Amalgam ink to stamp out my images because it is Copic safe. And I'm going, here's where I noticed my nail polish matched the color VO4 and I thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> so I needed to point it out apparently. Um, but here I'm going to be coloring um, this balloon purple. I knew the draft was going to be yellow. Yellow's complementary color is purple. That's how I chose kind of my color scheme here. Um, certainly any other color balloon from the rainbow would have worked as well. I just thought that that would be pretty together. And then last, the last video I did for W plus nine, we talked about coloring balloons and they were kind of smaller balloons. This one's a bigger balloon and it's going to look really, really funny. It's going to look really, really funny the way that I'm doing the shading, leaving those gaps. Um, this one will have two highlights. It'll have a highlight on the left hand side and a highlight on the right hand side. Um, and it's, like I said, it's just going to look strange, but just kind of bear with me uh, as we go through the process. It'll be darker at the base of the balloon where it gathers. And um, it will be, I left too large of a highlight in the center. Like you can see that big awkward rounded, it almost looks like a shark fin. Um, I left it a little bit too big 
Um, but don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna go back over it and at the end of it the balloon will look like a normal balloon should look. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I just, I guess I've been really into like a lot of cake, a lot of balloons. I'm, I apparently I'm just in a birthday mood. Speaking of birthdays, so, um, my son is in kindergarten and this is really the first year that, um, we've had like just been inundated with birthday parties. We pretty much have a birthday party almost every weekend. Like how do you decide what birthday parties you're going to and what birthday parties you're not going to? Because he wants to go to all of the birthday parties. And so far, honestly, that's exactly what he's gotten. So here is where um, like I went over and I realized it was just too light. So I went, I went back with the VO4 and just covered that and it made it look... Um, it made much more sense and I'm just going to blend that with the VO1 and then I always like to, if I don't leave a um, white highlight, I like to go in with a gel pen and add it back in and then that's what I'm doing here. This white highlight is a little bit thicker than maybe I would normally do on an image but it's because the balloon is so much larger um, so it can kind of withstand a very large white highlight. For the little draft, I picked out a bunch of yellows. Um, the only one that isn't a Y is the darkest color, which is a YR24. I use that a lot to shade my yellows, a lot, a lot. And um, here I'm just going to fill in the entire little guy with the Y00. That's going to be my highlight color. And um, then from there, you're actually going to see this is this is why I do lightest to darkest. One of the reasons. The other one is because I'm super heavy handed with dark colors. But when I went in with the YO2 and started doing the shading, um, I shaded his legs uh, as if the light source for most of them was on the like top right hand side. And then I realized that his two front legs, that was going to make the darker areas right next to each other. So I changed the way I shaded it when I started adding the Y08 and I ended up leaving the shading um, underneath his belly. So where like the backside of his leg, his front leg is so that there would be some differentiation. I'm not entirely sure that that's realistic, but also this is a very whimsically drawn draft. So I'm not quite sure that that matters. Um, for the spots, I filled them all in with Y08. And then for the ones that are in the quote unquote shaded areas, I'm using the YR24 um, just so that it, the spots on his body also look shaded. So then from there, just, you know, back like we normally do from darkest to lightest, just to make sure everything is blended out. Um, so what's been going on in my life? My poor, okay, all oh, this was sad. Um, my poor, I have a dog. Her name is Molly, Molly the Mastiff. And um, my poor little puppy was, I took her to a, just like a regular pet store groomer. Um, this was probably like a year or so ago. Um, no, it was probably like two years ago. And they trimmed her nails. And they must have cut too close to the quick, which is like the, um, the nerve endings, blood vessels that run in between their nails. Um, and it was just a bad experience. It's a bad experience all around. Side note, um, I am fussy cutting these, so there will not be a white edge. But if you prefer not to fussy cut, there are dyes that match this stamp set. I just wanted, um, I didn't want the white edge on top of the rainbow because I was already going to have the white clouds. Anyway, so she had a very traumatic experience and then the next time I took her in, um, she was kind of a little bit snappy with the people who worked there uh, and they ended up having to muzzle her um, in order to cut her nails. That was very stressful for the both of us, quite honestly. Um, and so then I just didn't take her back there. So I would, when I would take her to the vet, I would have the vet do her um, nails this is a uh, Memento Tuxedo Black Marker. These are water-based. And so I'm just using this to finish off the edges of that fussy cutting so it makes it look like my cutting is even, even in areas where maybe it is not. Um, definitely want to use water-based, not alcohol-based. Alcohol-based will bleed into your paper. 
Um, so I would go, I, when I would take her to the vet, I would um, just have them trim her nails. Well, they don't use the little Dremel, like the little sander. So they would just kind of be that blunt cut and then they would catch on like the couch and blankets and stuff like that. Um, so I wasn't really a huge fan of that either. And so a friend of mine actually is a veterinary technician and she started, um, we're going to talk about the card for a second real quick. Um, so I'm stamping this um, sentiment and I'm using the uh, W plus nine black dye ink to do that. And you hear me oftentimes talk about grounding my images. And usually I do that with a shadow or some sort of shading. Here I'm actually going to do it with the sentiment. So it's going to, because it kind of step up, it steps up, um, it's going to give that draft somewhere to sit so he doesn't look like he's just floating and then no shading required. Building the base of the card here, I'm adding um, foam tape around that frame so that I can put it on top of the rainbow and it will uh, sit up a little bit, just add a little bit more interest. Um, but anyway, so they don't, they don't drumble them so they're smooth. And a friend of mine who is a vet tech started um, kind of her own business where she is like, tr like she travels to you um, to do things um, like that, like nail trimmings, any kind of groomings if they need to like hair shaved, um, uh, if they've been injured or if they have had a surgery and they need uh, wound care after they've seen a vet, like she does all of these things, which is awesome. So I was like, listen, she hasn't had her nails cut in probably like a year. I was maintaining it over the summer just by walking her because walking them on concrete naturally um, kind of shaves down their nails. And so I was like, I was doing that. And now we're into winter and her nails are too long and she's chewing on them and I know they're bothering her. So she came over um, to try to trim these poor dog's nails and like she straight, she straight up was not having it guys. Not at all. So they come in and um, Molly is very... She's very friendly, wants to see her. She knows she's got treats in the bag, the whole deal. We tried peanut butter. Um, we tried, which apparently is how they do it normally, um, like kind of restraining her, uh, which was really hard on me because she was crying and I knew she was upset and then I was upset. And I like, if it was something that was hurting her, like her toenails were like growing into her paws, then I would have just sucked it up Sally because it would have been better for her. But this whole thing, which should have taken, mm, like maybe 20 to 30 minutes ended up taking like an hour and a half and it just ended up being like too much <laughs> too much for the both of us honestly um so we did manage to get her back nails trimmed with actually no issue it was her front ones that were the issue so I would have to be like give me your paw and then she would give me your paw and I would give her the peanut butter and then I would try to clip her nail and then <laughs> uh she would take her paw away and so it ended up um like for every I don't know five times she gave me her paw I maybe got to clip one toenail so she's still hurt. She's got a bidgetty manicure right now. And I'm probably going to have to take her back to the vet to have the rest of them done where, um, you know, they will like just clip them while they're doing the things that they, they need to do with her and it will be much faster. I just felt like the whole thing was kind of stretched out for her and then I felt bad. Um, so if you have a doggy that doesn't like having their toenails clipped, please tell me what, um, what you do in order to make that happen because my little, my little girl just does not like it. So that's the, the car built up and then I just, you know, I love me some glitter and so I put it on everything. I put it on the clouds, I put it on the rainbow um, and then I like turned the paper to make sure that I could get all areas of all the things. You don't really have to worry about this picking up any color of alcohol markers. If you are using another medium, you might have to be aware of it kind of spreading it around. Uh, the clear one Costello will sometimes do that. But that's the whole entire card. So thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.